and you get ready to do it. We, we're about set here for 1A hurdles. As Again, we amazing shoot. how fast they, they set this up. Yeah, this I mean, we just, just got done with the 3200. All the hurdles are ready to go. And again, if you're not familiar with the preliminaries, two heats in each uh, preliminary in these events. So we're going to shift our pages over to uh, the event coming up next, girls class 1A, 100-meter hurdles. And I'll tell you in the field here, it's going to be two races here. So these are preliminary races as we shift gears here. The 4, 5, and 6, a 3,200-meter runs, those are in the evening. So class 1 through 3A, they go in the morning. We have seen 1 through 3A, and now we shift to the hurdles. And as we do so, girls 100-meter hurdles in 1A, Lindsay Eck out of Beloit St. John's ran a 14 3 4 in 2000. And going to win this race at the finish. Easily done. And trying to set themselves up for a final. As we'll check the bib number, but we do have a, a winner here. And be patient with us. We'll kind of catch up with this as we go. They get reset again. Again, it's always so impressed with these events, Mark, because of the athleticism, the speed, the balance, the timing. It's it's all there in. Be, it's, it's a tough, tough event. So Emily Hutcherson has a 17.76. She is in lane one. Uh, lane five is uh, Georgia Hattisall. And Hattisall out early, gets to the first hurdle. She's in lane five, and she's got the race to herself at the moment. Ran Blue Valley's Georgia Hattisall. Hattisall to the finish. One hurdle to go. Lane five, lane two. So Georgia Hattisall wins. Paige Baird from Almina Northern Valley will join her. Those two will qualify for the finals. Hattisall had a great field. And that's the Mideast League champion. And so uh, the, the rest of the field, the seven that are in it, get to reset. They'll put themselves back in the blocks here. We are in the girls' 100-meter high hurdles. These are preliminary races. There are two of them for each class. And again, uh, worth mentioning, top two in each race of two advances to the final along with the next best four times. In class 2A, all-time leader Sarah Hines out of Howard West Elk and a 14.8 in 2015. Lane three, out to a good start. That's Hayden Bachman for Meade. Hurdle three, she's still got the lead, getting a challenge on the outside from, here. from uh, Kayser. Kayser's out of Plainville. And to the finish, lane eight comes on strong. Lane eight. It's Chloe Harrington's McIntyre. Chloe McIntyre. Wow. And who is it? This is going to be close. They haven't posted yet. It looks like McIntyre at a lane eight in Harrington. Did she get it? They're waiting. It's close. And the winner is. It's McIntyre out of Harrington out of Bachman. How about that? Austin McKinsley's Riley Cleese. Rollins County, County's Amy Krause is take a look at the crowd there a little bit. Hill City's Madeline Nelson. Jalen Stapleton from Mead. Smith Center's Grayson Hutchinson, Gentry Fowler from Jeff County North, and Udall's Riley Goodson. That's lanes one through eight. We have had two false starts in the three races so far. We'll see if we can get a clean start here. Jalen Stapleton in lane five had the uh, best seed time coming into this. Start is clean, lane five. That's uh, Jalen Stapleton. Stapleton extends her lead over lane four, which belongs to Madeline Nelson. And it's Stapleton. Stapleton. Lane six and lane two, Riley Gleason. It looks like Stalen, or rather Stapleton from Mead is going to win it. Stapleton indeed is going to win it. Stapleton wins it. And Gleason, Alexis Edwards, lane six out of Sterling. Hayes, Thomas Moore Preps, Kendra Worth, Madison Dellinger out of Eureka. There's your eight. As we go to class 3A, best all time, Katie Geibel. Remember her out of Burlington not that long ago, 2007? Now Kaylee Lyon. Uh in lane four here. Lane one, in fact, there's nobody in lane one. So there's seven again in this field. Lane one was supposed to be uh, Dane Duran, but she's not in the field. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And a lane four. This is Kaylee Line. Line to the finish line, along with Lane Needham. And it's going to be Line. Kaylee Line. Lakin. And then uh, Lane Needham from Cheney. Looks like they're one and two. It's a really, really good time. Right. She ran a 13.03. Oh, my. 13.03. She's from Mount Pleasant, San Jose, California, out of Sacramento. 
In this heat, Miranda Ortiz from Cheney, time of 15.67 is the uh, best seed time, and she will be in lane four. So here we go with Willard, Wilson, Taylor Bergman, Miranda Ortiz, Ashton Akins, Avery Williams, but also Erica Schultz and Danielle Mason. 100 meters, girls, fourth race, second preliminary, class 3A. Lane four is Miranda Ortiz. Ortiz getting challenged. This is going to be a big finish. Last hurdle to the finish line, getting a push from Tara Wilson of Sterling was Miranda Ortiz of Cheney and Ashlyn Atkins of Erie. And on the scoreboard, Ortiz. Ortiz. It's Bergman, uh, Patillo, Howard, and uh, Meeks as uh, we are underway in this uh, first heat. And again, that is more Howard of McPherson comfortably out in front, pushing for the uh, finish line, and she will win that heat easily. Check that. I'm sorry. 4A, that would be, yes, Ruddle of McPherson uh, winning that hurdle event. Uh, pretty much in a walk. It's just what you want to do when you're that fast and you have that kind of time, you want to get out in front, just stay out of trouble. I was going to say, over the hurdles. very efficient performance there. She made that look pretty easy. Uh, just kind of a machine going over those hurdles as we get this great view of them coming right at you. And that is Emma Ruddle. She was in lane four at that best seed time coming into this heat. Again, the top two finishers automatically qualify for the finals. And so Emma Ruddle is uh, your first place finish. And sure. Jewel Bolden up next. You want to see something special. Watch this. Jewel Bolden, Andover Central, one of just two kids in this meet that has gone under 15 seconds, a 14.61, and it's still not the 4A record. Shauna Cal, uh, call of outstanding uh, Letitia Pledger of Kansas City, Washington, at a time that was set seven years ago, under 14 seconds. They are in the blocks. Remember, this is a pushing wind, which makes it a little bit more of a challenge. Oh, there we go. But that is Bolden well out in front, comfortable. Striding cleanly. Howard giving chase as well in second place. Bolden and then Howard. What I would finish one and two. Right, what I consider, again, a, a challenging event, a difficult event. They make it look easy. Elizabeth Bacchus of Salina Central in lane two. Dimitri Carter of Sumner Academy in lane three. Autumn Hanna of Mays in lane four. And then uh, Taylor Muff in lane five. Lydia DeLolo of, uh, I'm sorry, I'm up. I've got it. I'm going. Yeah, I think that's, <laughs> Kelly. that's correct. Rachel Kelly of uh, Blue Valley uh, is next in lane seven. And uh, Morgan Chapin of Topeka Seaman is in Lane eight. You know, we talked about the breeze rod, and it's kind of picked up a little bit this afternoon. Again, it's coming out of the north, so it's at their back. But there is a situation, if there is a, the wind too strong, a headwind, they'll turn it around. Is there a certain mile? It is two meters per second. That, okay. And don't ask me why it's metric, but it is. Well, <laughs> I guess everything else is metric here, too. But, yes, two meters per second. And that's when they would turn it around. But that's, that's not going to be, around. that will not be an issue, I assume, today. And it shouldn't be an issue all weekend. It looks like no. the weather's going to hold off. And that is Muff getting out quickly, looking good. In lane three, that is uh, Carter as well. Muff and Carter battling it out. Now Muff using those long legs and just pulls away. And it looks like Carter is going to hang on for second place to get the other. And, of course, the two girls from Carroll, uh, Nordis and Eaglebreck, in the middle. And what's going to be a very close race. Again, Maggie Rinsberg from Newton. And you mentioned the boys. They have some really great sprinters this year. The Kate Newton is one of them, uh, Rimsberg. Uh, from the Remsburg family, and uh, certainly he has been uh, a big part of Newton High School boys sprinting for many years now. Uh, finally, he's yeah, we, going to We might graduate. as well, full disclosure, you're a former railer yourself. I ran for them a little bit. <laughs> I only had a two-year career. It was very short and pretty uneventful, but, uh, yeah. And what events? Uh, the mile, the two-mile, and the 800, and was fortunate enough to get third here in the 4 by 8 uh, in terrific. 1980. I'm dating myself. Yes, it was a ways back. Just kind of an unusual start. That's Eaglebreck starting from almost using the blocks, but uh, starting with a one-handed start and off uh, cleanly. It is Rebsberg getting out in front. Now about three meters ahead and starting to pull away. Rebsberg, just one more hurdle to negotiate. She's got it. And then Eaglebreck will finish in second for Bishop Carroll in lane five. Latha South in lane six. Uh, Bella Stamati of Shawnee Mission East in lane seven, and Garden City's Annie Gerber in lane eight. 
you know, Elena Kramer from Jackson City. I believe there's two uh, runners from Jackson City. I believe Jackson City has the largest representation in Girls 6A. Nice. Boy. And that's Keanu Newman in uh, lane four getting out really fast. And she is just leaving the field behind as she pulls through in a great time, unofficially under 15 seconds. We'll see what that comes up uh, with the official standings by Leon. From Lawrence, and now I understand what Mark Ewing was talking about, getting all these names pronounced right. We're not... <laughs> You get we try our when best when they're in here by, for, by the third or fourth time here, and by tomorrow we will have this completely wired. So, uh, again, boys, four, five, and six A, one ten highs coming up. We'll have a little bit of a pause right there while they readjust the hurdles. They have to move them and raise them, so that takes a little bit of time. And again, watch for a Blue Valley North uh, Shank there in lane four, in the blue. Got it. Came out of the blocks a little quick, got up right in a hurry, and she is falling behind a little bit. This is Wren from Hutchinson, who is uh, out in front. He's got the long legs and the long stride going. Engineer Wren will win it. Schenk comfortably in second place. We'll move on to the next round, but a good showing for the